सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर सेवन टीम गेम्स सेवन पॉइंट फाइव हॉकी यू माइट हैव सीन अ हॉकी मैच इधर इन योर स्कूल और ऑन द टेलीविजन लेट इज नो मोर अबाउट दिस गेम बाई गेटिंग फेमिलियर विद इट्स हिस्ट्री हॉकी एज अ गेम हैड बीन ब्रॉट टू इंडिया by the british servicemen and the first hockey club was formed in kolkata in 1885 the hockey association was founded in 1886 the first international tournament took place in 1895 and the international rules board was founded in 1900 the international hockey federation is the global governing body of field hockey founded on 7th january 1924 in paris India won all five Olympic games from 1928 until 1956 and then again won in 1964 and 1980 in 1976 Montreal Olympics artificial turf was used for the first time and that resulted in development of new tactics and techniques and also modification in rules 7.5.1 equipment and facilities Hockey sticks are made of wood or composite material and it should pass through 2 inch ring. Please see figure 7.18. The weight of the ball is between 156 grams to 163 grams with circumference of between 224 mm to 235 mm. Please check figure 7.18. A goalkeeper must wear a helmet, leg guards and kickers. Usually she or he wears extensive additional protective equipment including chest guard padded shorts heavily padded hand protectors groin protector neck guard and arm guards figure 7.18 it shows a hockey stick and ball in this figure we can see a hockey stick and the hockey ball in white color it says its weight is 5.5 ounce page number 93 figure 7.19 hockey field dimensions the dimension of a hockey field are length 91.4 meters width 55 meters center line a straight line is drawn midway between the back line and parallel to them then there is a 25 yard line in each half another parallel line is drawn at a distance of 22.9 meters penalty spot 6.4 meters towards the pitch now coming to goal post the height of a goal post is 2.14 meters and its width is 0.05 meter the distance of shooting circle is 14.63 meter from center of goal line and dotted circle is 5 meter away from shooting circle the lines across the field are 22.9 meter from each back line and touching one sideline to others now time for some activity activity 7.11 draw a sketch of the hockey field on the chart paper or blackboard and through a discussion with your classmates indicate all the measurements the goal post is 2.14 meter 7 feet in height and 3.66 meter 12 feet in width Distance of shooting circle is 14.63 meter from center of goal line and dotted circle is 5 meter away from shooting circle. The lines across the field are 22.9 meter from each back line and touching one side line to others. Now we have a box on the page which is box number 7.1. It tells us about the golden goal rule. When the goal is scored during extra time the match stops and the team scoring goal is declared as the winner 7.5.2 how to play hockey a match is played between two teams of 11 players each including a goalkeeper the duration of the game is two halves 35 minutes each in collegiate and international play the rest time is of 10 minutes The ball must be passed or dribbled down the field with the flat side of the stick. A goal is scored when an attacker strikes the ball into the goal from within the striking circle. Even if the ball touches the defender and goes into the goal, own goal. 
If the score is tied after the stipulated time, extra time of two seven and half minute periods is played during which the golden goal rule applies. Even then, if the score remains a tie, then each team selects five players to decide the winner by tiebreaker rule. A foul is called when any player shields, obstructs, plays the ball with rounded side of the stick, interferes in the game, charges, hits or trips an opponent, uses the foot or leg, raises the stick, stops the ball in the air, hits, etc. If a defensive player commits foul within the shooting circle, the attacking team is awarded a penalty corner. A penalty corner takes place at least 10 meter from the nearest goalpost. The attacking player pushes or hits the ball to his or her teammate standing just outside the striking circle line. One player pushes the ball into the striking circle and the teammate hits into the goal post. During the hit, only five defensive players will remain on self back line and rest of the players will remain on the center line. A penalty stroke is awarded for any intentional violation by the defensive player in the circle for preventing a sure goal by foul means. During the penalty stroke, the goalkeeper must stand with both feet on the goal line and may not move either foot until the ball has been played. The offensive player may push, flick or scoop the ball from the penalty spot. When the attacking team plays the ball over the goal line, apart within goal post, the defence receives a 16-yard hit. The free hit is taken 16 yards from the spot where the ball crossed the back line. A push-in or hit-in is awarded to the opponents if a player hits the ball wholly over the sideline. All other opponents and their sticks must be at least 5 meter away from the spot where the ball is put into play. 7.5.3 Fundamental Skills Hitting the stick should be held with the left hand on the top and right hand should be just below it. Ball is positioned outside the right foot. The player strikes the ball with the center of the stick by using swinging movement of the stick towards the ball. Stopping. The left hand should be kept on top of the handle of the hockey stick and the right hand near the middle of the stick. The body should face the direction of the ball. Knees slightly bent and body also slightly bent forward. When the ball is coming towards the player, the stick should be brought forward in line of the ball and gradually withdrawn and placed on the ground, slightly inclining it forward from top. Dribbling A V-shape is formed by the index finger and thumb of the left hand which is placed on the inner edge of the top of the handle of the hockey stick and the right hand holds the stick loosely in the middle portion. Figure 7.20 shows two women hockey players. While the first one is trying to stop the other, the other one is trying to move forward by using the technique of dribbling. Page number 95 Activity 7.12 Hold the stick with both hands and keep it parallel to the ground. Tap the ball with stick for a minute. Stand in front of the wall and with the stick in hand and ball in front, push the ball to the wall and stop. Once you reach perfection in stopping and pushing, increase the distance between yourself and the ball and also between yourself and the wall. The knees are flexed, upper body bending forward and feet shoulder width apart. The ball is placed in front of the right leg 8 to 12 inches away. The ball is tapped from the plane surface of the middle of the blade towards the left and then tapping the ball from the reverse stick in front of the left foot towards the right. This tapping movement continues from right to left and left to right. Figure 7.21 shows players dribbling with ball. This time we have two men hockey players involved in the act of dribbling. Now moving ahead with the chapter. The scoop. This skill is also called the aerial pass or the overhead pass. The ball is raised in the air over the heads of the opponents. The overhead flick. 
the ball is kept in a stationary position and then raised over the heads of the opponents. The push. The grip is the same as for dribbling. A V shape is formed by the index finger and the thumb of the right hand, which shall be on the inner edge pointing downwards. The index finger of the right hand points downwards for better control. A sideward stance is taken where the left shoulder faces the target and the ball is placed in front of the left foot in line with the right shoulder. Knees are slightly bent while executing this skill. The stick is placed just behind the ball and it is pushed along the ground towards the target wherein the left hand is pushing the stick backwards and the right hand is pushing the stick forward. Figure 7.22 shows a woman hockey player pushing the ball. Page number 96 7.6 .6, Kabaddi You may be familiar with Kabaddi game. Kabaddi is one of the Indian games that demands agility, power and neuromuscular coordination. It also needs breath-holding capacity, quick response and a great deal of presence of mind. The game can be played on a plane and soft surface. The first known framework of the rules of Kabaddi as an indigenous sport of India was prepared in Maharashtra in the year 1921. The modern Kabaddi game was played all over India and some parts of South Asia from 1930. The All India Kabaddi Federation was formed in the year 1950. The new body, Amateur Kabaddi Federation of India, AKFI, came into existence from the year 1972. The first Asian Kabaddi Championship was held in the year 1980 and was included as a demonstration game in the 9th Asian Games, New Delhi, in the year 1982. The game was included in the South Asian Federation, SAF Games, from the year 1984 at Dhaka, Bangladesh. Kabaddi was included as a discipline in the 11th Asian Games, Beijing, 1990 and India won the lone gold medal of Kabaddi in the 11th Asian Games, Beijing, 1990. Figure 7.23 shows how players are trying to catch a player from the opposing team. 7.6.1 Kabaddi Court Length 13 meter Width 10 meter for playing Kabaddi, it is essential to have leveled ground with soft surface. Activity 7.13 Draw the sketch of the Kabaddi court with all specifications on a chart paper or blackboard and discuss with your classmates. 7.6.2 How to play Kabaddi There are two teams in Kabaddi. Each team consists of 12 players, out of which Seven players play and remaining five are substitutes. A coin is tossed and the team that wins the toss shall have the choice of the court or the raid. The duration of the match has two halves of 20 minutes each with an interval of five minutes. The player who enters the court of opposite team is known as raider and utters the word kabaddi continuously and repeatedly in one breath. The raider has to repeat the word Kabaddi without break, clearly, aloud, sounding within the course of one respiration. It is called cant. A player or raider must begin cant before he or she enters into the opponent's court. Page number 97 If a raider touches an opponent player during cant or if any part of the body of an opponent touches the raider and raider touches his court with the cant, the opponent is said to be out. If opponent or opponents hold the raider without breaking rules and do not allow him to reach his or her court until she or he loses the cant is known as holding the raider. If any player goes out of the boundary during the course of play, she or he shall be out and opponent will get one point. Once the raider reaches his or her court, opponent shall raid within five seconds. If one or two players are left in a team, the captain of the team may declare team out. Each team shall be allowed to take two timeouts of 30 seconds in each half. However, during timeout, the team shall not leave the ground.
players can be substituted with the permission of referee during timeout or interval. Team which scores the highest number of points at the end of the match shall be declared the winners. If a raider does not touch the balk line, he is declared out. Now some activities for you. Activity 7.14 Form two Kabaddi teams from your class and play the game following the rules explained in the text. Also prepare a Kabaddi court in the field. Activity 7.15 Observe a Kabaddi match and identify the type of raiding skills and prepare a checklist. Finally, compare the same with your classmates. 7.6.3 Fundamental skills Raiding skills the raider uses the following skills to make a successful raid. Faint or fake. A movement the raider uses to confuse the defender about his next move. Leading leg raid. A raider assumes a boxer's shuffle stance throughout the raid. Shuffling raid. The raider shuffles his or her feet throughout the raid and suddenly changes the direction. Reverse step raid. The raider keeps changing his or her attacking front foot and back foot throughout the raid. Hand touch. Please see figure 7.24. The raider extends his or her arm towards the defenders and tries to create a struggling action to make one opponent out. Hand swings. These are used by the raider to touch his or her opponents or to touch one of the opponents. Toe touch. Here, the raider extends his or her toes forward to touch the defender to touch out one of the opponents. Foot touch. Please see figure 7.25. In this skill, the raider tries to touch the defender with his or her foot to touch out one of the opponents. Kicking. The raider does a back kick, side kick or roll kick in order to touch the defenders. Page number 98. Figure 7.24 shows what hand touch means in a game of Kabaddi. Whereas figure 7.25 shows what is a foot touch used by a Kabaddi player against the opponent team. Safe Raid Here, the raider during a struggle can use the following tactics. Jumping over a player, dividing towards the center line or rolling tactics. Defensive Skills the antis use various techniques to save themselves and or score point. A. Catch or hold. While catching, a defender should keep feet apart, knees bent and body weight on the toes. The different types of holds are wrist catch, ankle catch, dive and catch as well as trunk catch. B. Blocking. Defenders block the path of the radar by creating wall of obstruction like full circle and half circle. You are just listening to this audiobook. Narrator Neeraj Yadav. Technical coordinator Buddy Langlingdo. Sound recordist Vikas Sangwan. Assistance in production Ruchi Sharma. Directed and produced by Vimalesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.